a whole lot of people. This survey was done, I think in ninety-four or ninety-six, I'm not very sure about the date, but sometime in the nineties, early nineties, the Nimhans Institute did a survey and they found eight percent of the inpatient who… inpatients, not outpatients, inpatients who come and stay in Nimhans for a period of treatment, eight percent of them came because of improper yoga and meditation. Because if you forcefully try to do something with your mind, it will freak. Now, we must understand uh, the English word meditation does not say anything specific in the sense, if someone sits here with eyes closed, people think he's meditating. But as you said, you could be sitting here and talking to yourself, you could be thinking, you could be contemplating, maybe you're chanting a mantra, it's called japa, you may be doing tapa, which is a way of generating heat in the system, you may be doing uh, dharana, dhyana, shuna, shunya, samadhi, samyama, like this, there are many, many things. English language is not descriptive when it comes to inner dimensions. English language is very good outside, technically, materially it's a very good language. But when it comes to inner experiences, there are not enough words to describe the various dimensions of human experience that happens. So the word English meditation is very general, doesn't say anything specific. If we… if we understand… Uh, if we want to understand the word meditation as dhyan or dhyana, being in Karnataka it's dhyana, okay. <laughs> if you go to Tamil Nadu it becomes dhyanam. If it is dhyan or dhyana that you're talking about, what it means is, if you sit here, your body's here, your mind is out there, what is you is somewhere else. That means there is a little distance between you and your body, between you and your mind. Once there is little distance between you and your body and your mind, suddenly everything is crystal clear. What you think is so complicated is very, very simple. It's just like, right now I came through… what a city you created, huh? <laughs> this… this dimension of what you call as meditation is essentially a little distance. So you're in the traffic, how bad it is. Suppose you took off in an airplane or a balloon, uh, you know, hot air balloon or something, you look down, this stuck-up traffic looks quite nice, <laughs> really. In the night especially, it looks quite nice when the traffic is jammed up. Have you seen this <laughs> from the airplanes? <laughs> but when you're in it, it's a totally different affair. When you're in it, the way you suffer it is one thing. Once there is distance, is a totally different affair. See, for example, this uh, planet is round, though Bangalore people think it's flat. <laughs> so, forever we argued, we would have continued to argue, because if you walk up and down this floor, you can feel it's flat, of course. But we started flying, we looked down, clearly it was round. Then we went and stood on the moon and looked down, one hundred percent it is round, no argument anymore. This is what you need to do with your mind and your body. There's a little distance, suddenly everything is crystal clear. Simple things. For people have lived here for fifty, sixty years, and they still don't know how to handle their thought and emotion. When are they going to learn? After thousand years? When? If… if you do not know how to handle your thought, how the hell did you live till now? I don't know. By accident? When you live by accident, Anxiety is normal, how else can it be? Suppose accidentally you just… you don't know how to drive a… ride a motorcycle or a car, let's say, accidentally it started rolling. Anxiety or no? Yeah. Picked up speed, fear or no? Yeah. Became very fast, terror or no? But if you know how to drive, the faster it goes, the better it is. Sure. Yes, sir? The same with your mind and body because you are enmeshed in it, haven't figured a damn thing about it, it looks very complicated, little distance. This is dhyan, this is meditation in a way.
So if you create that little distance, suddenly everything is clear. What looked so complicated is just a simple thing. So you think meditation is some kind of an act, it is not an act, it is a consequence. If you cultivate your body, your intellect, your emotion and your energy in a certain way, meditation will happen as a quality, not as an act. People are doing ten minutes meditation, they will freak themselves after some time, for sure. A whole lot of people, this survey was done I think in ninety-four or ninety-six, I'm not very sure about the date, but sometime in the nineties, early nineties, the Nimhans Institute did a survey and they found eight percent of the inpatient who… inpatients, not outpatients, inpatients who come and stay in Nimhans for a period of treatment, eight percent of them came because of improper yoga and meditation. Because if you forcefully try to do something with your mind, it will freak. It's very important when you have been given, do you agree with me, this human mechanism is the most sophisticated machine on this planet, do you agree with me? Have you read the user's manual? <laughs> then how? Then how do you use it? <laughs> Just by accident <laughs> So just few tips of not doing this mistake, how, how… how to go about it? See, it is these titbits which have destroyed people <laughs> The reason… the reason why spiritual process has become a ridiculous circus, I'm saying this consciously, it's become a circus because everybody is trying to do it on the street side. On the street side, they want to see… Uh, teach Gita. Krishna waited for many years. Arjuna and Krishna, you have Arjuna board. Arjuna and Krishna were intimate, they know each other so well. But Krishna waited till the last moment where there's an extreme situation where Arjuna's mind is being crushed. He waits for that moment to give the teaching. But all kinds of idiots are reading it on the street corner. Without creating any situation, nobody knows what the hell it is, simply words and words and words as you said. When you listen to it, suddenly you find you have to shut down everything and listen because as simple as it is, you don't get it. <laughs> because it is not its complex, but the simplicity is a problem for the human intellect. If you're trying to grasp things through… through intellect, complicated things you will grasp. Simplest things, people around me are always freaked because I'm telling them the simplest thing, but they're thinking through many things, most simple things, because it is very simple. Birth is not your doing, death is not your doing, it happens, both of them happen. In between, you just have to be… just have to be Bindas <laughs> that's all. You don't have to give birth to yourself, nor do you have to kill yourself, both will happen naturally. What are you doing here? Everything is happening, you don't have to spin the planet and make it day and night, you don't have to do this and that, everything is happening. For you to be just here, be in tune with everything and receive the bounty of life, such a big mess, because they are looking at everything intellectually. When I say intellectually, the nature of your intellect is such. If I ask you a question, do you want a sharp intellect or a dull intellect, you must choose, I'm going to bless you right now. So essentially, you want a sharp intellect, that means it's a cutting instrument. <clears throat> it's like a knife, the sharper, the better. You don't want a blunt knife, you want a sharp knife. Now, this is the only instrument you have in your life. For everything you use a knife. If you want to stitch your clothes, you use a knife. I, where's that girl gone? She, I think she used a knife on her pants <laughs> If you use your knife to stitch, you will leave it in tatters, isn't it? Yeah. That's all you're doing to your life, that is all. You are just leaving it in tatters simply because you're using a knife to handle everything. 